Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys a comparison between DaVinci Resolve 14 and OpenShot version 2.4.1. So DaVinci Resolve is a free video editor that also has a premium version that is more targeted at professional video editors. And then OpenShot is a totally free video editor. Now, they're both cross-platform, and I believe they are all compatible with both Windows, Mac, and Linux. In terms of complexity in the video editor, OpenShot is a far simpler video editor. It's meant to be kind of more of a YouTube audience sort of thing, where you're not really messing with things like nodes, or advanced color schemes, or targeting areas of the screen to blur out just one specific spot. And you're not really going into the Fairlight tab, like in DaVinci Resolve, where you would mess around with 12 different audio tracks at once. So in terms of the really advanced stuff, obviously DaVinci Resolve comes uh, straight ahead on that. Uh, you can have multiple tracks and that sort of typical thing inside of OpenShot. Uh, you may notice, though, a little bit of a weird quirk here. Um, the tracks aren't separated video audio. Um, you can have video and or audio on any of the tracks and you can still split your audio from your video uh, to edit those separate tracks individually which is really good I, I couldn't imagine using a video editor these days that doesn't have multiple tracks but yeah just figured I'd point that out now in terms of uh, special effects that are included in the free version uh, if you go to the effects library of DaVinci Resolve you'll see that there's plenty of uh, video transitions one of the things I really don't like here is that until you actually put them onto a clip, you don't really get a preview of them, though. Whereas in OpenShot, uh, we can see all of the transitions. Uh, before we actually drop them in, we have an idea of what it's going to look like when we put them on the clip. Uh, the same also applies for the few video effects that aren't a transition that do exist inside of OpenShot. Now, in terms of audio effects, neither really come out of the box with anything. Uh, if you check DaVinci Resolve audio transitions, all you see are crossfades, which of course you can fade the volume in and out uh, in OpenShot as well. But in order to really get advanced audio effects, DaVinci Resolve 14 allows you to install what are called VST effects. And these are uh, effects that a lot of different people over the years have created. So uh, you can add things like the Reaper filter to uh, reduce some of the background noise or DD gate, which would allow you to just mute the microphone altogether if it's not reaching a certain audio threshold in your clip. And uh, many, many other VST audio plugins. So the fact that DaVinci Resolve is compatible with those in recent versions is a really big deal because it just allows you to basically bring anything you want into DaVinci Resolve as long as it is a VST audio effect. Now, um, as far as I know, and I'll double check this before I put the video up, uh, OpenShot is not compatible with these VST audio plugins, so that's a big negative. Now, as you work with your clips and you make cuts, which, by the way, the timeline functions are kind of the same in both of the different programs, though I do honestly find DaVinci Resolve to be way more responsive. Like, here, I'll just do a cut. It's kind of instantaneous, and that may just be entirely because of my uh, computer hardware, but I've never been able to get very fast reaction times inside of OpenShot, unfortunately. But in terms of being able to animate your clips, DaVinci Resolve has a really good keyframing system inside of the inspector. So wherever you see one of these uh, diamond shapes, you're able to add a keyframe. You can also hit the back arrow to move to previous keyframes. And whenever you're sitting on top of a keyframe, you'll have this red diamond. So whenever you want to make a change to your timeline and actually animate part of it, like having it zoom in, so you can kind of see there I have it zooming in from 1.5 times zoom into times one zoom. Uh, you would just click on these key points and set them. And actually, if you've already created a key point and you just go to a random point and you, let's say, change something, it's actually going to automatically create a keyframe for you. So very similar to Adobe Premiere, honestly, if you've ever used that. Which is a good thing. Uh, having good keyframing, it really allows you to change all of these different settings uh, very, very smoothly. Now in OpenShot, it's kind of similar. Keyframes are indicated by these little green dashes or notches. Um, as far as I know, it doesn't have any tool for going between the keyframes, but you can set keyframes or you can enable one of your clips 
the keyframe ready by basically selecting the, the clip that you want to edit, going to an option that allows you to do keyframes, like let's say location X, and then you can start uh, setting values. So whenever you set a value, as long as it's blue there, you'll get a green indicator, meaning that you're sitting on top of a keyframe. You can see the green notch there. You can go to a different area, set a different value. You can actually control the curves between them as well. So you have different options here for determining at what speed does the transition actually happen, depending on its location in the... So what I mean is, like, you could have it ease in slowly at the beginning or ease out slowly at the end, or you could have it start really fast at the beginning or be fastest in the middle or fastest at the end. kind of depends on how you want the flow of that transition animation to go. Um, all that kind of stuff also possible in Adobe Premiere as well. Now, that said, although you can do curves in OpenShot, I think it's way smoother inside of DaVinci Resolve 14 as well. So inside of DaVinci Resolve 14, we can also control the curves of how an animation actually occurs between two keyframes by clicking on one of these points after opening up this uh, part of the video clip in the timeline. And then we can click these different curve options and control them by dragging this new green dot around. So if we wanted it to do something wild, like end up at this point, but go high first and then low, I could leave it like that. But if I just want it to be, let's say, a smoother transition in one way or another, we just kind of drag this around until we get what we want. So you can kind of see how in that case it went zoomed in very fast at the start, but then it kind of slowed down at the end. Now, in terms of export options, I would say that the two programs are actually relatively similar. Uh, in DaVinci Resolve 14, you have a bunch of different presets, including options for uploading to YouTube and Vimeo, basically exporting it in the right format that will have the best compatibility with those sites. You can also do audio only. And you can also create your own custom profiles if you don't want to have to mess around with any of these settings at all in the future. Uh, in terms of formats, you have a bunch in both DaVinci Resolve and OpenShot as well. But uh, the interface for exporting files in OpenShot is also quite a bit uglier, I would say. Uh, you kind of look through here. It, it does have the option, so you can select targets and uh, your base video export resolution profile. Um, so let's say you want 1080p, 30fps, 60fps. You should be able to find those on the list. And then if you have any advanced settings, you can come in here. Um, but it's it's just not very nice to look at, I would say. It's definitely functional, but uh, the interface does need some work. So overall, I would say DaVinci Resolve 14 is, of course, the superior video editor. You are, of course, slightly limited in the export settings, but for 90% of people out there who don't have very, very expensive equipment, um, you're going to be just fine with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now, would there ever be a case where I would recommend OpenShot Video Editor? I would say if it actually works well, better with your computer than it does mine, um, and you try it and it actually is pretty responsive, depending on your hardware, uh, then it's probably okay for newer users, especially people who don't already know all of what the different transition effects do, and you want to just be able to have a preview before you apply some of these effects to your clips. It definitely has a mild advantage there for the typical video editor user. And because the application is simpler and kind of is more spartan in just giving you the tools that you need rather than adding some of the extra stuff that gets really complicated, uh, I would say OpenShot is just fine as long as you are pretty much doing a video that just composes of uh, basic transitions, maybe some title sequences, and adding in a music track and calling it good. But if you're trying to do any more advanced work, where, like for instance, you go into the color tab, and you want to split a video uh, clip into two different parts before making some changes to each of these different parts and then merging them back together at the end, having a node sequence basically, uh, then definitely uh, DaVinci Resolve 14 is a tool that actually gives you the features a professional might need and also has that upgradable version to get you an extra effects bundle inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So, in conclusion, my edge definitely goes to DaVinci Resolve 14, but I would say for probably 90% or more people out there who just need to get a simple video editor out there, there's absolutely no harm in giving both a shot. Uh, both have free versions to download, so there's really no reason not to. 
So I've been Chris. Thanks for listening, and I will see you guys in my future video content.